Hello guys, in this video we'll be looking at DNA results, predicted appearance, predicted traits of a Peloponnese European Neolithic farmer woman uh, who lived in the Neolithic. And this is what she looked like with my tools for phenotype prediction. My tools predict her to have uh, brown hair, snub shaped nose and uh, brown eyes. They also predict her to have uh, kinky hair shape, which is why I depicted her with uh, very kinky or curly hair in this picture. Uh, I will show you the predicted uh, traits with other tools as well, so let's get into them. This is what HRS Plex predicts for her in terms of phenotype. It's predicting her to have either brown or blonde hair, 100% uh, likelihood of light hair shade, which I don't understand how that works. How do you have 100% likelihood of light hair shade and then majority brown hair? Because to me, brown hair is a dark hair shade, but whatever. And she's predicted to have brown eyes here. And uh, this is her predicted phenotype with snipper free. With snipper free, she's predicted to have uh, brown eyes, also brown hair, and uh, very white skin. In fact, uh, she's more than a thousand times more likely to have white than intermediate skin, and 35 million times more likely to have white than black skin. Uh, very interesting result. She had a very European genotype in Fro 19 Pro. She was a no go learner. Uh, as you've seen in my previous videos, none of the like ancient genomes had this mutation and this is a very uniquely European mutation. You don't see people outside of Europe with this mutation and uh, actually if my memory serves me right, I've, se I've seen other uh, Neolithic farmers with this mutation and she was heterozygous for the warrior gene in Comte. Um, heterozygosity here means that she had one of the warrior uh, IE alleles which is a European mutation and um, I also have the same genotype. It's an intermediate genotype in terms of amount of dopamine and uh, the, the quickness of dopamine reuptake. Uh, she did not have derived OXTR, which is the closest we have to the sociopath gene, so no sociopath gene. Probably did not have any problems with the empathy. Uh, she did not have derived EDAR, which is a gene implicated in East Asian facial features, so probably did not have East Asian facial features. Uh, she did not have the European lactose persistence mutation, uh, so was probably lactose intolerant as an adult. And um, she did not have the European mutation that protects against myopia. Very interesting mutation. I've seen a Neanderthal with this mutation, actually. And uh, she was a carrier for red hair based in her genotype in MC1R. That's why in the previous results you've seen there was a little bit of a likelihood of red hair for her as well. When it comes to polygenic traits and uh, illnesses, she had a very high, like, top 0.1% risk score for bipolar disorder, which would suck to have in the Neolithic. Uh, she also had a pretty high risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, she also had a pretty high, like, above average risk score for coronary heart disease. Um, she had a average risk score of type 2 diabetes and above average risk score for Parkinson's disease. She had a average risk score for asthma too. This is what she scores with MDLPK11. A very interesting result and quite not typical for a European farmer. She's scoring 15% Caucasus stuff here, uh, which is very exotic. And she's actually getting modeled as a mixture of like LBK plus, plus Iranian Chalcolithic or among other things, LBK plus uh, Iranian Late Neolithic. So it's basically a mixture of uh, European farmer plus something from Iran. So it's a little bit of an exotic uh, admixture. And you can actually see this exotic admixture with her Eurogenes K13 results where she scores 2.7% West Asian, which is also like, it's kind of a little a little score, but there is a little bit of it, which is um, not supposed to be present in uh, European farmers. And she's getting modeled as a mixture of Sardinian plus, among other things, Lebanese or Samaritan. And when it comes to the official G25 for the sample that I found on Explore Your DNA, it's also closest to Sardinians and it can be modeled as a mixture of Sardinians plus 36% Samaritans, kind of like uh, the Eurogenes K13 results you just saw. And uh, this is what she's scoring with MDLP Ancient Roots K10 from Admixture Studio with the Oracle. She's getting, getting modeled as a mixture of Samaritan plus Sardinian or Sardinian plus Iraqi Jewish or Kurdish Jewish. Kind of a mixture of just Sardinian plus Jewish, it seems to me. But focus on the 1.4% archaic man here. This is the component that Gorillas was scoring 100% of, that Chimpanzee was scoring 100% of, and that Neanderthal was scoring mostly. So perhaps what... The way I'm interpreting this is that she had about 1.4 or 2% of Neanderthal or Neanderthal related admixture. And this is what she scores with Pun ZNLK10. Once again, a very exotic result for a European farmer because she's actually scoring 15% CHG here. And with the Oracle, she's getting modeled of like Bedouin plus Spanish, or uh, I like line number two, which is Sardinian plus Saudi, and there is also Tuscan plus Bedouin, so just kind of a mixture of West Mediterranean with something from the Middle East. 
This is what she scores with Ponzi and ALK12. Once again, a pretty exotic result because of the Caucasus admixture. But the Caucasus here is actually a little bit uh, overestimated on this calculator. This calculator overestimates Caucasus in European farmers. And she's getting modeled as a mixture of uh, basically European farmer plus Satsurblia or European farmer plus Kotia Skide, uh, which if you don't know is Caucasus hunter-gatherer. So she's about 90% European farmer plus 10% Caucasus hunter-gatherer, uh, at least according to this oracle. And uh, this is her result with Ancient Eurasia K6 here, she's scoring 10% Ancestral North Eurasian, uh, which is incredibly high. It's about as much as what Sardinians score on this calculator. And with the Oracle, she's getting modeled as a mixture of Anatolian Neolithic plus Iranian Neolithic, or like Baloch. So clearly, there is a little bit of a shift towards Iran and Western Asia here, relative to Anatolian Neolithic farmers. This is what she scores with Gidrosia K3. As you can see, she's a very modern, like, Caucasoid individual. Just like the rest of these uh, European farmers, they all score 96-97% West Eurasian here. Uh, a lot of modern European drift. And with Eurogenes K36, she's getting uh, this result, basically, East Mediterranean, Italian, West Mediterranean make up the largest components here. But she's also scoring some exotic components, such as 3% Armenian and 5% Near Eastern, which is probably from her Caucasus admixture. And uh, this is what the sample scores with G25. As you can see, there is actually quite a lot of Caucasus or West Asian related admixture. If you add up the Caucasus uh, Georgian CHG plus uh, Iranian uh, Vesme Neolithic plus Iranian um, Belt Cave Mesolithic plus Iranian Tepe Abdul Hossein, altogether that should be around 8%. Thank you for watching my video until the end. Um, you can download the sample in 23andMe format from link, which is in the description. And leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed my video.